So here we go. All right, so if we want to evaluate these guys, let's just go back through um, and look at the first quadrant. Even though I know this goes through all of the quadrants, um, let's just go through our first couple points. We know that's 1 comma 0. We know this is going to be square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. This point is going to be square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. And this one will be 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. And this point is 0 comma 1. This angle is pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi halves. So that's at least the first quadrant that you guys can see. I just very quickly <clears throat> opened up. And, but we have angles that are going to be going all the way around the circle. But we'll be able to determine these um, fairly, quick, fairly easily just by using our first quadrant. So the first thing we need to understand is when I have the tangent of theta for a angle that's going to intersect a point on the unit circle, remember that tangent represents the y coordinate over the x coordinate, correct? So what I'm going to do, first of all, is just going to write in what each of those would be. So let's go on and talk about the tangent of 0. The tangent of 0 is going to be 0 over 1, right? That's the y coordinate over the x coordinate. For tangent pi over 4, that's going to be square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. The tangent of pi halves, that's going to be 1 over 0. Does everybody see what I do? I'm just taking the y coordinate over the x coordinate. So now you guys can see, actually, we're, we don't actually need to use these points at all. So now the next point is 3 pi over 4. Well, if this is pi over 4, that's 2 pi over 4. So the next point would be 3 pi over 4, all right, which is, ladies and gentlemen, going to be a direct reflection of pi over 4, but it's in the second quadrant. Therefore, the x coordinate is now going to be negative. So it's going to be square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2. For pi, that's going to be halfway around the circle. That's negative 1, 0. So now that's going to be 0 over negative 1. For 5 over 4, that's going to be this point, but now in the fourth quadrant. Where in the fourth quadrant, we know that both coordinates are going to be negative. So it would be negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2. For 3 pi over 4, or 3 pi over 2, that's halfway around the circle, which is now 0 over negative 1. So that will be negative 1 over 0. 7 pi over 4 is now same reflection of pi over 4, but now it's in the fourth quadrant. So only my y coordinate is negative. So that's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. And the tangent of 2 pi is going to be 2 pi is the exact same thing as 0. So that's going to be 0 over 1. Does everybody see how I quickly evaluated all these points? Uh, yeah. No, no, no. It's this point right here, 2 pi. So it would just be 0 over 1. That's a phone. All right, so does anybody have any questions on how I quickly evaluate a tangent? Now, you didn't have to show all this work, but I wanted you guys to see how my answers are going to play out. All right, you could have simplified this much, easy, much simpler, but I wanted to see so you guys could see where these came from. So anything, 0 over 1, that just equals 0. Square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2, that just equals 1. You can't divide by 0, right? So we call that undefined. Here, it's again 1, but now the denominator is negative, so it's negative 1. Tangent of pi um, is going to be 0. Again, it doesn't matter what you divide 0 by. It's always going to be 0. Here, I have a negative divided by negative, so now my answer is going to equal positive 1. Again, for 3 pi over 2, that's going to be undefined. And 7 pi over 4, we're left with, again, a negative 1 and then a 0. Okay. So what we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is graph this like we did sine and cosine. All right? Now, one thing I want you guys to understand is, remember when we had sine and cosine, we kind of saw this amplitude. We saw the barrier, right? The highest that the point could get um, for sine and cosine was determined by its amplitude. That was like kind of the crescent. Well, for tangent, we're not going to have an amplitude. I'm going to show you why. So, but first of all, before we get to our amplitude, um, we know that we go up to 1 and negative 1. And the next thing is you guys can see that let's go into our scaling that we have. So we'll start at 0, and then I'll say pi over 4, pi halves, 3 pi over 4, pi, 
5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi. And can we go in the negative direction as well? Yes, we can. So when you guys are giving your graphs, you're going to have to provide um, two periods. I'm just going to do one period in the negative direction. All right. So now let's go and plot the points. Let's just plot the points that we have. So for, pi over, so for 0, we had 0. At pi over 4, we have 1. That's 1, and that's negative 1. At pi over 2, we have undefined. Now, I know we haven't, didn't talk about rational graphs this year. Um, but if you guys remember in Algebra 2, you couldn't divide by 0. And when you had the find the value um, for a rational function, and you had whatever values uh, made 0 the denominator, we created a special dotted line. Does anybody remember the special name of that special dotted line? What was it? Asymptote. And that's where your graph is going to approach. Remember the definition of an asymptote, it is the line that your graph is not a value for, but what your graph approaches. Then at 3 pi over 4, we're left at negative 1. Um, at, uh, at pi, we're left at 0. At 3 pi over 2, or at 5 pi over 4, we're left at 1. And then at tan at 3 pi over 2, we have another asymptote. Okay, um, 7 pi over 2, we're left at negative 1. At 2 pi, again, we're left at 0. All right, so let's go ahead and graph right here. So right now, we know that my point kind of looks like this. But then, remember, we have asymptotes. So our graph has to approach the asymptote. So therefore, this graph is unlimited on its output. Therefore, there is no restrictions on how high or how low the graph is going to go because the graph has to approach your asymptotes. Well, here, we know it's going to approach over here. So what do you guys think at negative pi over 4 is? If pi over 4 is 1, what do you think negative pi over 4 is going to be? Negative 1. And then pi halves will be another asymptote. OK? So therefore, that would be um, at least two full periods of your tangent graph. All right? And then we'll get into some of the characteristics of tangent. So I want you guys to at least see what the tangent graph looks like as we kind of move on to its important points.